Here is second worksheet on trigonometric identities. It is a bit difficult, difficult than the first one. But it should not be very difficult for you after watching the 100 videos on trigonometric identities. And I hope and wish that you can get them all in the first trial. If not, and if you face any difficulty, you may go back to the videos. Most of them are already solved for you, some are related. Okay, Some may not have been solved but are related I have the same concept. So it's a good time to apply your knowledge and concept and check it out. So it is a practice sheet for you and get you prepared for the test. Okay, so make a note of all these identities and then sit down and work. If you can't solve or if there's a difficulty or even if you find a better way of doing it, get back to me, right? Now, the last one I'll go through which is square root of 1 minus cos x divided by square root of 1 plus cos x and this is equal to cosecant x minus cot x. Whenever you get something like square root, the solution is rationalization, okay? Rationalize and that is a very important tool to solve such identities. I don't have many examples in the videos on this, therefore I'll take this up and just give you a hint here. So, so we'll do it on this side. So we'll start with the left hand side for this which is square root of 1 minus cos x over 1 plus cos x, right? Now this could also be written as square root of 1 minus cos x over square root of 1 plus cos x. At times I have seen students being reluctant to write it like this. They just keep on going with this and at the end get lost, right? Now here rationalization means that what we will do here is we'll basically multiply by 1 minus cos x square root. So both sides. So that is square root of 1 minus cos x and square root of 1 minus cos x. Correct? So when, when you do that, then the numerator becomes a square, right? Square root of something and square root of the same thing. So in the numerator, you get 1 minus cos x. And the denominator gives you, within the square root, a square minus b square, which is 1 minus cos square x. And from Pythagorean identities, you know this is sine square x, right? And sine square x square root could be written as sine x. And 1 over sine x is cosecant x minus cos over sine x is cotangent x. And that is your right side. So, so you can do something like this to solve square root identities and we call them rationalization. Correct? So that is a strategy to follow whenever you have a square root thing. Okay? Now, identities like these, this can look like, a, this looks like a perfect square. Here what you can do is, you can split one as cos square x plus sine square x you can do that. You can also do something like this. Sine square x minus 1 is what? Correct? Write everything in one variable. Correct? And then factor it out. That is another solution. So, here also, this could be written as, 1 could be written as sine square x plus cos square x. In, in that case, the numerator will become what? Numerator will become sine x plus cos x whole square. Why? Well, that is to solve the left side, right? On the right side, we have complicated terms in terms of tan and cotangent. If you remember, trigonometric identities like 1 plus tan square x is actually secant square x and 1 plus cot square x is cosecant square x. You can use that and then convert tan and cot in terms of sine and cos. That may help you to do this identity, correct? Now, this one is very simple. This is difference of squares. 
cos square x minus sin square x. It could be written as cos x plus sin x times cos x minus sin x. Right? So that could be utilized here. So there are ways to solve all these identities. Correct? Now to do this, better side is this looks more complicated, right? So you your intention will be start from there. But to be very frank with you, the easiest way to do this is to start from here. One. This is in cosecant and secant, right? So what one could do is multiply this by conjugate of this. That means cosecant x plus secant x multiplied by that. Then you get squares, and this is difference of squares, right? Then write them in sine and cosine and get your answer. That is one way, which is complicated. Then what you can do is you can start by changing cosecant as sine in terms of sine and cosine. Cosecant is 1 over sine, secant is 1 over cos, and then solve it. I think that would be the simplest way of doing it, okay? So, the simplest way, of course, is normally write in terms of sine and cosine. So, you have to write your function in terms of sine x or cosine x, and then go about, okay? All these identities, if you just write in terms of sine and cosine and then go about, it should be very simple for you. Okay, and second strategy like these whenever you have squares of sine and cosine, you know what? You have to use sine square x plus cos square x equals to 1. And once you use this, you should be good to go, right? Here also, I will suggest write in terms of sine and cosine, okay? Don't get lost into complicated methods. So here also, just convert them into sine and cosine and see if you get that, right? You don't have to start from both the sides. You start from here and then you can reach that place. 2 over secant square x is like 2 cos square x. Think like this. 2 over secant square x basically is 2 cos square x. Think like this. So if you convert this into sine and cosine, you should get that very easily. These questions here will may involve 6 or 7 steps at times, especially some of these here, right? but on the top could be solved in five steps. So think that and do. It is a very good practice sheet for you. And if you have any problem, get back to me. Let's move on to the third trigonometric identities sheet. Thank you.